In order to demonstrate the usage and workflow for the Ladybug tools to PHPP, what I'm going to do in the next series of videos is model this little single family home all the way from a blank rhino scene to a complete PHPP. Um, if any of you have watched or taken our Design PH or PHPP classes through either Passive House Canada, New York Passive House, or North American Passive House Network, you'll be familiar with this little project. This is the example building that we have used in uh, so many of those uh, those other courses. And so uh, it's a, a good test case, a good example for us to, to use in this case as well. So this is a very simple project with very simple geometry. It's a good uh, example case for us to uh, just show the functionality without getting too lost in complicated forms or, or anything like that. Uh, of course, the workflow that we'll show here is relevant to uh, just about any building of any uh, type. And, you know, we'll do, a, we'll do it as a multi-zone model so we can show the multi-zone workflow, which, of course, you then just sort of extrapolate out to however many zones or rooms you have in your project. So, um, just a quick overview, you know, uh, of the example project that we'll be building together. Um, we've got just a, the the basic floor plan here. Um, you know, a simple uh, open kitchen and living and entry room, and um, uh, it's a two the two story building. So we've got a sort of open to, to uh, a open to below area in the center of the home, and a couple bedrooms and washroom on the upper story there as well. Um, you know, very simple in terms of the, the overall form and the windows, so we'll have a chance to model some of the windows and um, model at least a couple different assemblies and, and show how that all fits together. Um, uh, you know, very compact form uh, uh, overall, and um, go down to the section here, um, and very simple in terms of the modeling. So we'll model a first floor assembly, and then a second, or a first floor zone, and then a second floor zone. We could, of course, break it up into you know, individual rooms if we wanted to, but that'll be good enough for, for our purposes here. So, um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get started. Let me put this PDF off to the side. So I'm in a Rhino scene here. I have already loaded in the relevant um, uh, floor plans and the section view so that we can get started modeling this together. And um, uh, let me just uh, double check my units just to make sure that I am in the right units. So I just typed in units and we're in meters. So I'm going to be working in meters in this um, uh, and modeling in meters here. Um, obviously, you can draw your floor plans, whatever units you want, um, but just make sure that they are brought in and that your units are in meters in Rhino for the time being. Uh, again, we'll talk about units as we sort of go along here. So I've got my first floor plan, got my second floor plan, and we've got the section in there as well. So let me go uh, into the perspective view so that we can kind of see everything together. I've also uh, located the plans. So you can see the plans are stacked one on top of each other. And then we've got the section in here lined up as well, um, just to give us some reference geometry to model our building with. So as with any uh, Ladybug tools or Honeybee project, there's a million and one ways that we could go about modeling this project. Um, we're going to model it uh, in, in, in one fashion, but you know, by, by no means does that mean it's the only way to, to model a, a project like this. There's, you, know, you can use your whatever Rhino tools or, or a functionality geometry process that you, that you prefer. So let's get started. Let me let me turn off the section for or the plan for a second, and um, actually let me keep the section on. So the first thing that I would like to do is model this first floor uh, zone. And um, as I said, we could, if we wanted to, break it up and model this little mechanical as its own zone, uh, the entry as its own zone, the living room as its own zone, the kitchen as its own zone. For sure, we could do it that way if we really wanted to get results on a room by room basis like that, we could totally do that and we could absolutely build our model that way. That would be just fine. For our purposes here to kind of keep things a little more manageable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this entire floor as one zone, then I'll model the second floor as another zone. Um, That'll give us a chance to look at the zone, the multi-zone workflow and, and options without sort of getting us bogged down in managing, you know, lots of lots of geometry all split up. But but again, you certainly could do it that way if you, if you wanted to for, for whatever reason. It sort of depends on how you want the output, um, what sort of level of uh, uh, detail and breakdown you want for the, the final output there. So I'm going to model this as one zone, and then we'll model the, the second floor as, a, as another zone as well. 
So in my perspective view here in, in Rhino, and um, I'm going to come over to my layers, and let's make a new layer, and I'm going to call it 01 Geometry. You can call it whatever you want, and I'm going to make a new layer here and call this um, First Floor. And I'll set that as my active layer. So I'm going to be drawing on the first floor here, and I just need to make a first floor uh, mass, which goes from the outside of the wall to the outside of the wall, from outside of wall to outside of wall. So I'm just going to come over here to the box tool. So I'm in the standard uh, toolbar, and I'm going to come to the box tool, and I'm just going to click in one corner, and then drag a rectangle out to the far corner uh, to set the, the boundaries, and then I have to set the height. And so I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to click. Uh, I could either, well, let's do this. We'll go in the middle. So I'm going to kind of hover and lock there and hover there. And then we'll find the midpoint. And there we go. So I just, I, I brought it up to the middle of our floor assembly there. You can bring it up to the top or the bottom. It's not going to matter much for our purposes in this case. Um, but uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, in this case, it was easy enough to just go right to the middle. Let me go and switch into uh, ghosted view so that we can see the surfaces a little bit easier, uh, just so you can see what we've drawn as surfaces and what are actual uh, lines. Okay, so that's our first floor thermal zone, our first floor mass. All right, our, in Passive House, we always model to the exterior of our uh, wall assemblies. Uh, that's going to be true for ceilings and floors as well. So we do need to make one modification here. If I was to come under, uh, come towards the bottom, notice that the, um, it's a little hard to tell, but notice that the, let me turn off the floor plan, notice that the bottom of our, the bottom surface of our mass is aligned to the uh, top of our, of our floor assembly. And again, for a passive house, we want that to actually be aligned to the bottom of our floor assembly. So I need to pull this bottom surface down to this uh, lower floor assembly there. So I can do that in all sorts of different ways. I'll just do it using sub-object selection. So hold down Control and Shift on the keyboard and select the bottom surface. And then, of course, I can you know, drag it and move it around, move it wherever I want. Um, I'm going to come over here, type M, and then uh, V. Whoops. M and V for vertical. And then I'm just going to use my snaps Notice that I can get those snaps to locate it, and I align it right to the bottom of my uh, floor assembly there. If I was to go to one of my other views, you know, go to right view, and let me turn that to uh, ghosted as well, so you can really see it. Notice that the bottom of our mass lines up to the bottom of our floor assembly there. So important to put that geometry in the right place. Let me go back to my perspective view here. And um, that's really all there is to it for this building, right? Obviously, for if you have more complicated uh, structure, you can have a more complicated uh, geometry. But for our case, it's a very simple little rectangle building. So we just draw a little box. We've got a top and a bottom, four sides. There we go. There's our thermal zone. Now let's do the same thing for the second floor. So I'm going to come over here to my geometry, make a new sublayer, call this second floor. And I'll make that my active layer. Let me relocate, make this a little bigger. So now I'm going to draw the second floor. And I'm going to do it in just the same way that I did the first floor. I'm going to come over here to my box tool. And I'm going to let my snap register on this upper left, pull it across to the lower right. And then I'm going to stretch out the uh, vertical dimension. And just as we were talking about, the vertical should go to the top of the ceiling assembly. So I'll bring it over here until I can snap to the top of my ceiling assembly, as shown in my section drawing there. If you get it in the wrong place, again, you can use your sub-object selection, Control and Shift to select the polygon, and then just relocate it wherever you need it to be. All right, so I can relocate it, I'll hit M and V to move vertical, and then I'll just drag it until I feel it snap at the top of my uh, uh, wall assembly there. Of course, you could do this in your, again, in your right view. Uh, you can see in the right view that we, we have a good alignment with the top of our geometry to the top of our wall section there. Alrighty. 
So that's all we need to do for the massing. Now you say, what about all the rest? What about the roof? What about the attic? What about these foundation elements? All of that kind of stuff. We'll deal with that all later. The roof obviously is going to just be a shading element, so we don't need to worry too much about that at the moment. The way that we deal with these foundation elements is obviously going to be in the thermal bridges, um, and, and so we can come back and talk about all that when we talk about thermal bridges and, and the other uh, elements as we, as we fold those in. I'll leave out the shading geometry for now. We'll leave out the windows for now. We don't need to worry about all that stuff. We'll come back and deal with that um, in later sections. But this is enough for us to get rolling with. We have two different masses. Note that they are both, if I turn off the first floor, notice that they are both six-sided objects. So they have all six sides. They have a bottom and a top, and they have all four sides. That's true for the top, and it's true for the bottom. So you say, well, wait, that doesn't make any sense. We actually have a, a duplicate surface in the middle there, right? We have we have two surfaces, one point one belonging to the upper zone and one belonging to the lower zone. But that is the way that we have to model these things for our ladybug tools and and uh, Energy Plus models. We need to have two surfaces here in the in the um, in the interface, and of course, uh, uh, they they do have to be perfectly aligned with one another. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you know, there's a lot of really good resources, um, both in Energy Plus and and in, in Honeybee. Um, the documentation that talks about those types of adjacencies and um, interface interface elements. So I won't go into that here, but um, definitely check that out if you are interested in any of that. So that's all we need to do for our first step in modeling our little building here. So when we come back in the next section, we'll take a look at getting this geometry into Grasshopper and building our multi-zone honeybee and ladybug tools model.